Good morning. How is everyone? I hope we're good. It's Friday. It's the weekend. Well, almost. Let's just, okay, start it again because I've already been listening to it for like 10 minutes. <laughs> all right. So I hope you guys are good. I hope everyone's all right. We made it to Friday, day five of the stitch long. Um, today we're going to do some big, big stuff in the back. And that is these two big leaves. And the reason we're going to do it on a Friday is because you have extra time, um, over the weekend to like sort everything else out. And then if you have already caught up with all of this, then, um, you have extra time because they're quite big, these two. And we are going to stitch over a lot of stuff. So we're going to stitch over this guy and this guy and part of this guy and these guys. Do not worry you'll be able to sort the pattern out later. Do you know what I mean? Um, because these are quite easy. I'll show you how to, how I make them. Um, like without a pattern or anything, like you can just stitch them, period. Um, and yeah, I'm going to use this dark color, 218 from Anchor. I really, really like this color. Actually, I use it in a lot of my patterns um, and I used it in the garden the greenhouse stitch along. I used it a lot there. So yeah, let's get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the, let's see here. We're going to use the satin stitch. Some people really, really are going to be like, oh, really? Um, but it's really, really great for big areas like that. I knew, I knew that was going to happen. Did you hear Jesse? She's just knocked on the door because she wants to come back in. So I told her, I said, do you want to stay outside or do you want to come back in? And she didn't get up. She just looked at me. So I said, okay, close the door. And she went back to her nap. And now all of a sudden she wants to come in. You coming in or no? Don't just walk away. Come on. Go take a nap or something. No, go lay down. Go on. <laughs> She's so mad. She's like, oh, God. Go on. Go lay down. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do for this, these two big, big leaves, and they're going to take up a lot of the background, and that's why I kind of want to do them early on so we can add the things over top of them um, easily. easily. So I'm going to get a different color. I kind of want the blue because the purple looks just like the black and you won't be able to see it as well. So let's just get the, the blue one. And what I like to do with these is make the grid lines. And I know I bang on about this a lot. Yeah, it's light blue. I know I bang on about this a lot. Morning, quick visit as need to take a bandit out. I'm pretty sure that's what Jesse wants to. So just come swing by mine afterwards. <laughs> you can do one right after the other. Um, so what, uh, what I like to do is I like to do these grid lines because they keep your satin stitch nice and parallel all the way down. Because when you have such a big area that you're going to cover, it's really, really easy to start off like, yes, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. And then all of a sudden you start going like this and then you're left with like a little bit wonky looking, you know? thing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do one side at a time and I'll do this one here first because it's a little bit more clear and then I'll do this one after. I should be able to do both but we'll see. I feel like I'm talking fast because I won't like get through it. I want to make sure that I actually have time to stitch them because this one's so hidden. It's a little bit difficult. So what I like to do is put these grid lines in and it's really easy if you start in the middle so I do like the peaks and the valleys. So the peaks at the top and then the valleys at the bottom. And we just want to try and keep them nice and parallel. And if you didn't know, parallel is when you have two lines and they never meet. So they're unlike my wonky fingers. Okay. Pay attention to the top part here. <laughs> so they're all going to lay flat against each other like this. So they're not going to be overlapping. They're not going to have any gaps. They're not going to be like this. They're going to be nice and tight and close. Um, but parallel. So you should not have any. You can also get a, a ruler or like a, a little piece of, you know, if you really want to, but these are just good lines. So 
it's totally okay if you can see my fabric tips down there. So I'm gonna have to really hold that when I stitch it. Because I've got a gap in my in my fabric. So all the way down, they're gonna be like that. And then on the other side, we're gonna do exactly the same. So you can try and mimic the same angle if you want to, or you can just have your own angle, that's fine too. Let's just quickly do the other side. And put these as close or far away as you need to. So some people need them quite close because they need that, that guide. We've got a little piece up here, a little piece up here. And other people are like, nope, don't need that. So they don't actually even add them. So it just depends. That one's a little bit wonky. It just depends on what you need and do what you need for you. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so I'm using four strands of that 218. You can use all six if you want, but because we're going to stitch over it, I didn't want to make it too bulky. I've just made a knot in the middle of my thread. That's not helpful at all. My neighbor is actually finishing... Um, their floor they're putting a new floor down and i'm so excited for them but they're just finishing it right now and i can hear the um power drill you know cutting the floor hello from oklahoma i couldn't get to sleep but it's cool to watch you live Aww. oh don't you just hate that though when you can't get to sleep okay so like i said i'm just gonna hold this here i'm gonna do this top part first because that's gonna be the most annoying for me so what I like to do is, like I said, we're just going to stitch right over this situation, okay? Is I like to do, start in the middle somewhere. I can't do the top and then go all the way down. I don't know why. It's just never worked out for me. So we're doing the regular, exactly the same as before where we did the orange leaves. You can do the thread saver method. Or you can continue with the come up on one side, go down on the other. Now, I also know some people like to actually start in the middle, but then they'll, they'll do the next grid line and they'll work backwards to fill it in. You can do that as well. Whatever works for you, because satin stitch is one of those things that it's not a difficult stitch. Um, but the, when you try it, you might not nail it the first time. Um, and that is totally okay. It definitely needs practice. So once you find the way that works for you, I feel like the heavens open up. You know what I mean? Because you're like, oh, I got it. It clicked. I know what it is now. I know what I need to do. So a quick note on color. Normally, I like to have all the little bits and bobs. So I mean, these little hanging things and this one, and this one. I like to have those be a darker color because they look a little bit nicer in my, in my mind like that. But because I've chosen a dark color for the big leaves, I'm gonna use a lighter color for those, those little hanging areas. Gosh, this is not feeling good on my arm. should have just wrapped my hoop and I thought you know what I'll do that I'll wrap it and then I thought I don't really need to I should have so by holding this tight here it makes it so that I don't have the puckering in my satin stitch especially since I'm coming up on one side and down on the other the whole time Now, if you make one a little bit farther away, like too far away, and you're like, oh, whoa, okay. Um, you can always just go back and put another one in there. So I don't know if you can tell. But you just want them to be like one stitch length apart. My video always looks so dark. Like it's so sunny out. I feel like the more sunny it is sometimes... 
it almost like washes it out or something. Morning, Ruth. My thumb is starting to hurt from holding it. <laughs> But you have the whole weekend to do this. So if you don't finish today, do not worry. Don't stress out. It's okay. I promise you. It's a quiet Friday, isn't it? Does everyone have plans for the weekend? Anything exciting happening that you're going to do? Okay, that looks all right. Now I'm just going to jump right back here to this side and continue with this one. I'm trying to take down a wardrobe, the same wardrobe that I've been trying to sell for like two weeks that nobody wants. So we've decided just to dismantle it. And then if somebody wants to buy it, they can. And if not, who knows? And we actually got some new, um, like a table and chairs from a little, it's like a so like a small sofa, two chairs and a little table and it was a hundred pounds. Like that is such a good deal. So I actually have to try to put that together today too. Now, another thing is you can kind of see I'm getting off because I have the grid lines. You can see that the top has more area than the bottom here. So what you can do to fix that is do your next stitch how you normally would here and then just go down the same hole and see if you can make that area smaller or even go three quarters of the way if you do it just a couple times then it'll be all right it won't look too obvious or anything like that and now we're back on track okay so let's flip it over do a little knot and then it'll be time to do the rest of it. I do love satin stitch though. I feel like it goes much quicker than I think it's going to go, you know? Now if you use way less strands, um, it will be slow running because you only have that small amount of, of area, you know? So less strands is a thinner line. So say if I use just one strand, it would probably take ages. It would be nice and smooth. It would look beautiful, but it would take you for freaking ever. <laughs> so it's almost like you have to kind of think about how do you want it to look? Do you want it to be like nice and smooth and like delicate or or if you want it to have a bit more texture, a little bit thicker line. Because really, they are all just lines. We're just filling in with lines. Let's do the knot at the end. Hello, hello. Don't forget about this little guy up there too. When you have a short thread and then you get a long thread, you're like, whoa, I'm really pulling that far. <laughs> get like a little arm workout, you know? You can also do the thread saver method. I think I showed that last time with the, um, I am pointing down here, with the orange colored thread. 
you really want to, you can do that. You can get it to work. It's really nice for saving thread because sometimes I feel like when you have such a big object, it's really easy to use a ton and a ton of thread. So yeah, this is the gist. Got a nice easy day. I'm pretty sure we're only gonna use satin stitch one, maybe two more times. And all the rest of them will be different stitches. So hopefully that will work out. We'll see. We'll see though. Good morning, Debbie. I went through and added a bunch of people to the advent calendar group this morning. So that was good. And someone's pointed out that I added a pattern in there that didn't have the pattern in it. <laughs> because on Etsy, um, when I list them on Etsy, you're only allowed to have like small files. So I often have to separate the instructions and the actual pattern because if I make the file smaller, the pattern gets fuzzy, like the actual black and white patterns that you trace. Um, so I often have to separate them. And I accidentally put the one up that had just the instructions with no pattern. And then I wasn't allowed to edit it. So I had to just delete it and start again. Which is fine. But I was like, Ugh, leave it to me to do that, huh? Like, of course. Of course I did. I feel like when I started out doing the patterns, I didn't label them very well. I just kind of was like, oh yeah, it's a Christmas pattern. Let's just call it Christmas pattern. I'm pretty sure this is a leaf. Maybe I should have a look before I just go guns blazing on that. They don't have like some weird thing at the top of their head, do they? Two cans. But let's just check. It's a leaf. So that's good. I don't have to take unpick that. But yeah, I've sorted the pattern though. So in the group, that will be in there. You can totally see where I stopped pulling that. It's got ripples in it because of the fabric is too loose here. So later today or before Monday, I'm going to have to take this out of the hoop and wrap that little area so it gets nice and tight there. Otherwise, every time I go up here, I'm going to have to pull it tight and hold it like this the whole time. Like, which is fine, but it's just annoying to have to pull it because it can't just hold it. I have to really pull, pull that tight so that the fabric doesn't, you know. Pucker. You guys are really quiet today. I've got nothing though. It was um, trash day today, so the bin men came this morning. And 
That's pretty much it. That's all I've got. <laughs> so I was up early. Now there's lots of ways you can make this different. If you don't want to do the same color on both sides, you could do one half one color and one half another color. You could also do some little accents in there to like jazz it up a little bit. Meaning you could do almost like we did here with the, the little like starburst pattern. You could do that for each of the peaks here where it kind of goes around. So you could do a little straight stitch every once in a while. Um, so you could do that if you wanted to. You could do a little outline with a different color. It just depends on how much you want to do. But you could always do a... Um... Okay, I've got a couple questions. Just a minute. But you could always do that later. So we will have a details day. We normally always have a details day. At the very end, it's normally either at the same day that we finish the hoop or the day before, depending on how it works out and how many details people want to add um but yeah if we have a details day then that's something that you can always add later so if you're kind of like I did the stitching but I don't really know what I like what else to put on there like I'm not really sure because it's already quite a busy pattern so you might decide well, just leave it dark and then I'll I'll deal with it later type of thing Okay, so a couple things. Busy stitching, Friday evening in Australia and it's raining. Are you guys in lockdown again? I know someone, I follow a couple people from Australia and they said that they are in another lockdown, but I know each state is different and the states are quite big. <laughs> Not like in America where they're like really small. <laughs> um, how's your neighbor's flood? As far as I know, they've, they've fixed it. So I think... The daughter, when she came that night to, like, when he called her, I think she made it out to be a little bit more worse than it was, if you know what I mean. Because she said that, like, the ceiling was about to collapse and it was, like, really, really bad. Um, but I definitely heard him watching Countdown the, the next day. So it must not have been too bad. And the electricity people came out and, like, sorted that for him and everything. So... I'm assuming that it's okay, but I'm not sure. I guess it was the toilet, I think I told you guys, but whoops. Okay, and then, oh, I missed the beginning. How many strands? Four. Thanks, Miss Robin. Are we going to put an edge between the water and the land? We will. Um, that will be on probably details day because it's not quite a big enough thing to have its own day. If that makes sense. I think because we have quite a bit of stitching to do to spend like a whole day on like that little part would be... Not a good use of our time. Okay, I've got one half done. It took about 20 minutes, 19 minutes, because I did a bit of talking at the beginning, per usual. And then we'll just jump over and continue. And like I said, this is where you can really... Ugh. I don't want to. my arm from holding the <laughs> holding the fabric up there <laughs> um yeah this is where you can really decide like how you how you want to do it and how you can make it a little bit different from everyone else's if you want to and I feel like I always say it but you don't have to do everything like over the top you can just leave things certain colors and come back later and decide what you would like to do with them then because there are a lot of details and sometimes I think if you put details in every single thing it might take away from other things that have details you know This 
says me, who literally put a pattern on every single freaking leaf that I've drawn. <laughs> oh, will I ever learn? Probably not. Thanks, it's just the blue part I painted has spread to the land part of my fabric. That's okay. You could totally just have a bigger river. Or when you're all finished, or now, you could go back with the other color and just lightly paint over it. So get it a little bit wet if you haven't, if you, if you haven't done too much stitching, depending on where, where you've done it. Like, are you talking about the top part here or the bottom part down there? So we'll probably do a line on the line but maybe not one down here because it goes through so many things so it might just be better to have like the suggestion of it starting and stopping here whereas this one is like a you can kind of see the water edge so something to think about loving this pattern and it's in an excuse to use my bright colors. Yes. That's why I think I loved the Sea Life Stitch Along so much last year because it's all colors that I probably would never use because they're just so bright, you know? But like coral is bright, all little underwater things. It was so much fun. So if, I mean, I'm, I'm using a lot of greens, but you don't have to use green. You can use any color you want to. So I've got these bright little guys at the bottom. You, someone else did blue ones and they are stunning. Uh, they're so pretty. But you could do these like in an orange color or a yellow. Yellow would be really pretty. Um, or you can use the other little bits and bobs kind of like falling down hanging down um, as an excuse to use brighter colors on those. So like yellow or purple, orange, something like that. And really like, you know, go all out on a part that's just small. So it doesn't seem like, whoa, that's a big, huge, like orange tree. Because <laughs> I know sometimes using bright colors or colors that are not traditionally used for that thing is a little bit like it's hard to do in a way because in like in your brain you're like no trees are green like I can't make it any other color <laughs> like hi 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 I've got Sarah Nem stitches is that is your name James or is it Because I think your other, I follow your other account too. Or we've messaged from your other account. <laughs> Tropical, yes. But I do know, like, I think especially when I taught art, it was always, it was always really hard because some kids would be like balls to the wall, like the sky is orange and like the grass is like blue. And some kids would just be like, no. Nope. Nope. He, he made an orange sky. That just cannot happen. <laughs> and it was just like, you know, they're using their creativity. It's fine. And they'd be like, nope. Nope. Miss Tori, um, the sky's blue. Okay. So they're wrong. <laughs> it's just like, just so funny to see how some kids would just like, yeah, fine, whatever. Like, I'm just going to use my imagination. And other kids were like, I'm not having that. <laughs> Like, look outside. It is blue. Fix it. <laughs> it just cracks me up. Kids are so funny. Okay, can we do it? Plenty. Plenty. Is it plenty of space to actually do a knot, though? Smallest knot ever.
It's actually meant to be really nice today. And so I think I'm going to go out and try and put this garden furniture together. Although it's probably going to tell me that it needs two people. And just like the exercise bike of last year, I'm probably going to do it by myself. <laughs> I will not be defeated. Thread chicken. Yes. I almost won, kind of. I mean, we'll see if this lasts the rest of the time to the very top. Just doing a little knot here. And then we're back in business. I love that sound of the fabric going through, like, or, or the needle going through the really tight fabric. Isn't it so nice? I remember someone asked me once, um, how do you make that noise? I was like, what noise are you talking about? And she's like, the needle going through the fabric, like, is it like, like, what is it? I'm like, literally, like, you're watching it. <laughs> it's just, that's all. It is just the, t the fabric is tight and the needle's going through. That's it. I love that sound. Do I need another one there? That's probably okay. I remember when I first started stitching, I would, I would stitch in the evenings, like, just sitting on the sofa, like, watching TV or whatever. And it was so loud. And I was like, David, um, is that annoying? <laughs> like, like to watch television and like hear like the boom, 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 like over and over. And he's like, no, I don't even notice it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's good at least. I like the sound. And you can always tell when your fabric's like not quite tight enough because it doesn't make the sound like the like as, as, as loud, you know, you're like, oh, that's too loose. Or if you ever do like patches and you don't use a hoop and you just kind of like use your fingers to like stretch it out a little bit. I'm always like, oh, I miss the sound. Embroidery ASMR is so pleasant. It really, really is. There are some ASMR things, though, that I do not like. Like the chewing ones. Ugh, I can't stand it. Or like mouth noises. Ugh, I can't do it. That's why um, I've actually stopped. Because I used to have like a drink. Like when I first started. And I was actually stitching over there. Um, I'm pointing to the other part because I've moved my desk. People eating, yes, oh, I can't do it. Um, but on one of the feedback forms, they were like, I love you so much, but can you please stop taking drinks because I can hear it in the video. And I was like, oh my gosh, because like I don't watch my own videos back. You know, like I already know how to do it. So I just put it up and then I'm done. Um, and yeah, they were like, like, please do not take this the wrong way, but whenever you take a drink, oh my gosh, it's like really loud in the microphone. And I was like, oh, that's so bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I don't know who wrote it, but I'm always so thankful because I always feel like that would really bother me as well. You know, I always like, thank you so much for telling me. I cannot do the eating, the people eating ones. Yeah, just, it's not for me. It's just not for me. I'm about to just stop pulling this because I'm doing me head in. A little one up 
here. said I could do both of these um, in one video and clearly I cannot um, but I will do the gridding for this one so you can see where the little bits are and where they are not because I do understand that this is like a mess um, but it's gonna make more sense once it's all stitched and you can like see where the things go I might actually opt for a lighter color for that one or maybe do some outlines or something um, so I'm just going to quickly tell you about outlines if you really want to do it or if you want to add some other little things um, to it because, like I said yesterday, I can't just tell you one way to do something. I have to tell you ten. Make you choose for yourself. Um, so if you really wanted to do an outline, I would recommend a stem stitch. Excuse me. I would recommend a stem stitch probably with two strands just like we did for the down here I don't know what to call them um yeah I really I really love a stem stitch for outlines because I feel like they're so easy um they look very similar to a whipped back stitch because it has that twisted kind of braid you know look to it not braid but the twist um it's just What's happening? Oh, I thought I had a knot, but I didn't. Um, so yeah, but it's just way, way, way easier. I know that's why I was like, please do not. So two people have said, this is such a busy pattern. I'm going to be confused. And then Cat's Floss has said, yes, it took me a minute when I was tracing to work out the squiggles, our leaves. <laughs> yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's why I said when I did the prep video, I was like, do not try and make sense. Just trace the lines. <laughs> like, Don't try and be like, oh yeah, this is a leaf. No, just see the lines and trace them because I know what I've done. <laughs> I apologize. Um, but yeah, so stem stitch for all of these. Make your stitches super, super small for these little areas, these, these curves here. Yeah, because otherwise it will look like this. When you go around, they won't actually like twist together. Um, so there's that. You could also do a line down the middle if you wanted to, to kind of like highlight that, that little part. You could do the straight stitches like we did for the fan ones down here. They're always super fun. Um, I think I said it earlier, but you could do each half of it a different color if you wanted to. Just make sure that the colors go together so they look like they're the same leaf. You can make it like a variegated option. Um, I don't know if you've seen those like variegated monstera plants or anything like that, but they tend to have, they're not all one color. They've got like little specks of different colors in them. So if you wanted to do some um, straight stitches, on the leaves to make it look like it's got, you know, like a speckled pattern. Or you can just say, F that, Tori, and keep it all one color and wait until the very, very, oh gosh, I've done it again. Wait until the very, very end and see what it looks like. So I know in the actual, let me see if my iPad has battery. 17%. I know in the actual pattern here, I've done some like a line down the middle and then a little like detached chain stitch. We haven't, I have, we haven't learned that yet. Um, but if you want to do that, you can do that. And then I've got little purple guys coming down. Um, but again, you don't have to. So it just depends on how you, how you want it to look. And there's nothing wrong with just leaving it until the end, you know. Um, but definitely, definitely stitch something in the main color because we will be stitching over it before we do the details day, if that makes sense. So we will, 
we will be stitching these little guys this guy and we've got one here we've got one here and one here and then i think i'm hiding one underneath my hoop stand um but we will do those before we do the details day so if you're like oh i don't know at least put something in the middle here okay so let's quickly do this the grid lines for this one and we can kind of see where they go I'll do an outline first. I'm considering outlining, outlining it all once it's done, but I'm not sure how that will look. Yeah. Oh, do you mean all of it? Like all of it in black? Or just outlining it all or doing outlining the whole leaf? I think I'll be checking the colored pattern all the time. Yeah, I mean, and you can like color one yourself too. So if you want to print it out, Give it a little, you know, get out your crayons. Okay, and then obviously it goes up here. I think I'm missing one there. I am. This is like a long skinny one here. All of it, he says. Not in black though. Various different colors for the individual pieces. Sorry, I just assumed that you are a he. So if you're not, that's, that's fine. But just let me know so I don't get it wrong. Nope, that's a leaf. So I think it's just that. So it looks like we're going like this. This one. Okay, and then we'll do the other side as well. I am indeed. Okay, good. I don't like getting people's names wrong or pronouns wrong. I know it seems like such a small thing, but like it makes a difference, you know? Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. So we've got just this little guy here that curves up. And then this one right here is actually covered. Okay, and then it goes way up here at the top. And then around. There. Happy with that? Are we happy with that? Yeah. Jasmine, I'm so late. Today was going to be the day I stitched and watched live. Stupid morning errands that took too long. That is totally fine. Don't even worry about it. There we go. Okay, so there's your homework. And that's why it's on a Friday because they are quite too big two big areas here and then you can just have a think about what else you kind of maybe would want to put on there again you do not have to the other thing is that if you don't like how these come together here in the middle so obviously I'm not finished I've got to do that a little bit um but I'll just do it later um you can always do a small stem stitch right down the middle or you could just do a straight stitch right down the middle if you don't like that because I know some people really don't like seeing where the threads come together in the middle especially if they can't make them like nice and tidy um that's something that people ask me about all the time so let's just zoom into that yeah so if you don't like this right here or maybe you didn't make them like meet perfectly so maybe you have some like little areas poking through like i do that's okay you can just cover that up so yeah don't be like oh i did it so wrong and that's exactly what we did down here at the bottom as well because remember we had the two different colors and then just that line down the middle like makes it kind of like wrap it all together makes it a little bit like in a, in a bundle you know so there we go that's what we've got for today so we've got this guy and this guy huh i'm so happy with that i feel like it looks really good 
I like it. We've done so much stitching this week. I cannot believe it. Like, we've done so much. <laughs> Hi, Kirsty. I was actually going to message you today. So it's like we're on the same brain brain wave, wavelength. Um, but you've just caught the end of the video because I'm finished now. So I will message you when I'm done. <laughs> So don't forget to tag me at the Barbie Fox and use the hashtag, hashtag the Barbie Fox S-A-L. Um, so far, all the videos are up on YouTube, I think, except maybe yesterday because I was quite busy yesterday. Um, so I'll have both of those up today, meaning yesterday's video and today's video, and then all of them will be on YouTube and all of them will be on IGTV and that way you can choose what you want to do. Um, how you want to watch it. I mean, I know some people like to like, what's it called? Like send it to the television. Uh, I want to, mm, there's a word for it, but I can't, I can't think of it. You know, when you've got it on your phone or something and it like, you like send it to the TV so you can like watch it bigger. Oh, well, I'll think of it later. Um, but no, some people like to do that. And so screen share. Thank you. Um, so I know, yeah, having the plant sanctuary one not on YouTube was cast. I think that's what, I think that's the word that I was thinking of, cast. Because um, in my mind, I was saying Comcast, but I'm pretty sure that's like an internet provider in America. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just me. Um, so yeah, having the plant sanctuary one with all those stupid errors, oh, it was driving me crazy. And I'm sure it was driving me crazy too. Um, but they're all up there now, not the plant sanctuary ones, these ones. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Make sure you tag me and yeah, I'll share. So enjoy and I will talk with you later. Bye.